The opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Scarefest Radio, the radio you can see. And hello everyone and good evening and welcome to Scarefest Television. I hope we're going out live because I'm getting a little ugly messages on the broadcast software. So we'll just hope, hope for the best and hope that uh, the internet is working and my computer is working and that all of these little red lights that are lighting up don't mean a damn thing. The original broadcast date is December 11th, 2020. And as you can tell tonight, tonight is a bit of a change of plans as we like to say. Um, what has happened, uh, basically we had, uh, uh, Darcy DeMoss and Amy Dolan scheduled for tonight. Uh, Darcy set the date, so don't blame me. But anyway, uh, something came up family-wise and, uh, she could not make it. And so, um, we found out this week and oddly enough, um, bring in Cece. Cece Ann is my co-host tonight. The, um, <laughs> this is the weirdest thing. We're in this international lockdown and nobody's fucking home this weekend. It's just me and you, Cece. We're... It's crazy, right? We're, we're all supposed to be home, social distancing, making sure everyone's safe, and everybody's out Christmas shopping. Yeah, I guess that's it. Um, just that—that's the only explanation I can come up with. But uh, but yeah, I, I contact. Although I did get January the, the January first show got booked in the process of doing it, so we'll have that coming up. Anyway, everybody, we've uh, we've we're just gonna uh, BS our way through tonight. Um, I'm hoping that um, there the light went green. I hope it stays that way. The um, nope, it went red again. Well, uh, people in the chat room, can you hear us? Can you see us? Someone acknowledge that we're actually broadcasting it would make me feel much much better. Because I I can just stop this shit and then lower the uh, the bandwidth usage and everything. Everything was working so good before the show. Anyway, ah, he, everybody in the chat room they say they can hear us, so that's good enough for me. Um, there's a little bit of a lag. They say there's always a lag. That's actually the lag. Uh, Scott Kendrick in the chat room. That might actually be me. Uh, because that's how badly my ass is dragging after the, um, the week, <laughs> the month. See, see, I went into November with this new project and I had set up plans. I had the best planned two month period that probably I've had since. And what was long... this plan? Well, just, I had the guest booked. I had the projects booked. Mm. Everything should have fallen into place. And I have had more glitches. In other words, I'm going, I'm going to go back to doing it this way. I'm just going to fly by the seat of my pants and um, and uh, just it'll do like I did you call you on Friday night and say, hey, you want to co-host? That kind of stuff. I'm just going to go Who back to doing that. Who have a life on Friday night? Call CC. <laughs> so. so anyway, um, so everybody, we're going to, the first block, the first block, we are actually going to talk about what uh, what we've been watching, and we discussed it a little bit before the show. And the one that came up that um, uh, Cece hasn't seen yet, but I was very impressed by. Not a horror movie, I admit, not a horror movie. Um, Peppermint. Has anybody in the chat room seen Peppermint on Netflix? It kept coming up in the little suggestion thing at the top that scrolls, and I said, you know, what the hell? Uh, Jennifer, whatever her name is, I always kind of liked her. Uh, Garner. Jennifer Garner. Garner. Yeah, Jennifer Garner. And um, it uh, it surprised me. It actually surprised me. It was it was very well made. Plenty of, plenty of blood and guts to keep even the most horror-centric person happy. 
And uh, the what surprised me when it first came on, CC, the the setup for the story shows Jennifer as a soccer mom, basically. Her husband has, is. well, okay. Her her husband has some shady friends. They make that kind of clear, but otherwise, uh, normal life. Not enough money, not enough time. You know, just typical family stuff. And she looks. Physically unassuming. I'll go that way. In other words, they've really they've made her into just a soccer mom. And the, and basically, what happens in the movie is um, something terrible, terrible, terrible happens to her family, which is fairly obvious if you watch the uh, preview of it. So I'm not I'm not doing any great spoilers here. And uh, so she goes away, and in I don't I, five years, uh, five year period, she learns mixed martial arts apparently. And uh, comes back and seeks revenge on everybody, and everybody it she kicks ass. I'll just tell you, it once you get to that point, the movie is just a nonstop thrill ride with an ending that I will say they didn't even need. They already had a good ending, and then went on and put another decent ending on the end of it, just so that me and uh, Joe can't bitch because you gotta like one ending or the other. So, well, sounds the only, like it's worth watching. The only thing is, when you watch it, listen closely. I don't know how it got the damn name. Hmm. I heard no references. Anita heard no references to peppermint. It wasn't even their dog's name. I have no idea why it was called peppermint. Well, it does sound like it parallels her life a little bit, though. So I wonder if in oh. real life she's actually out there doing Garnier commercials and kicking ass. Well, I mean, she she did all that martial arts training for uh, uh, Electra that was totally wasted, I might add, because that was now that that was a sewer rat of a movie. Um, although I like Daredevil. Daredevil was hard to believe, but done well. Well, now wait, okay, now if we're going to judge movies by what's hard to believe, then we get we we don't have a shot. Um, <laughs> I never did understand why people hated it so much. I, I rewatched it not long ago, at least part of it, and I, I see this is this pretty good movie. I mean, yeah, the 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 the, the karate fight in the schoolyard on the seesaw that was kind of stupid, but it didn't make the movie bad. So, uh, so there's my recommendation. Um, so that was your non horror recommendation. What is your horror recommendation? I'm going to agree with whoever the hell called it in. And I don't remember. We had a call-in show, and somebody called in and said, Watch Mayhem. And I know Brian Stidham is CD. He did a review for it, I think. But I don't think he's who called it in. But I never did go back and watch it. And I was sitting in the chair there, and I'd say, I need to watch that damn movie. And Mayhem, which is on Shudder, everyone, is both funny, entertaining, and blood and guts from, from beginning to end. It is just nifty two thumbs up yeah so that that's my horror recommendation um that's one thing i'm trying to figure out now cc you have can have some input on this i i'm actually wanting to go with netflix because everybody has netflix and i'm trying to um and but they really don't have that many good great horror movies you don't have netflix well, no i don't have netflix i'm a shutter girl all the way i am in a long-term relationship with shutter okay well tell you what i could do shutter we're like this I'm wanting to do an in-depth movie review, mm -hmm. this type of thing about you know, in other words, and I'm wanting and I'm, I'm wanting to go with one of the services that most people have. That's why that's only then I had a really cool name. I was going to call it Netflix and Kill, but that's already been taken by a podcast, so I can't use that. So I'm I was I was going to go with Scareflix because I could make the logo look like Netflix's. But the point is, I'm wanting to have a, I'm wanting to take a either a random or chosen by someone else horror movie mm -hmm. and, and just, but not a shitty one. Like, um, Jake threw at me and definitely not one like, uh, DB Dornak, Dornak, uh, threw at me. I'm in other words, a good, what they consider a good horror movie and then watch it yeah. and, the, but not have any pre dispositions toward whether how how much i'm gonna like it or whether it's you know really gory or whatever and so i'm one and i'm wanting i don't i don't know if i want it to be as part of a sh the show or do it as like a mini podcast 
And so that's another thing we're we're uh, we're looking at. Now, what have you been watching? Well, one of the things I love about the Shutter Channel this time of year is that they actually have a whole um, category of movies called Unhappy Holidays. So it is a whole set of movies that are holiday movies, but are also horror movies. So that is what I've been watching all week um, because I like to be in the Christmas spirit, but I also like to see people get killed in the movie. So um, I like that they merge that. So one of my favorites um, always around this time of year is um, if you guys haven't seen Rare Exports, it's actually a Finnish movie. Um, it is not in English. It is English subtitled. And I'm a huge fan of those movies um, because I think that because a lot of times they they do um, movies just differently like than we do over here in America. So you just get to see some different things and some different takes on 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 these horror movies. And Rare or Exports was done in 2010, and it's a very interesting take on the original Santa Claus or Krampus story. Um, and ladies, if you are interested in seeing lots of naked men, there is a scene where they are like being heard across the tundra. However, they are not naked men that you really want to see. So, but, but very, but see, I, I have no idea why women want to see any naked men, but continue. Agree. Um, no, of course. Anita, you like to see a naked man, don't you? At least one. Occasionally. <laughs> Occasionally. I think we're all disgusting. I, 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 like I said, that's the main thing I, my biggest problem with gay men is because I know that that means they like other men and I, I, I don't see the attraction from either side. I just, I think we're all disgusting animals with hair in places we shouldn't have hair. And it's just women on the other hand are works of art when they're naked. So I do understand why women go that route. Says a true heterosexual man. I guess. <laughs> anyway. But this, but this movie is good, and it's a little bit of an underdog story, and actually the kid in the movie is kind of the hero, so I think that's that's a kind of fun fun thing. Um, do I think it's a movie for kids? It's not a movie for kids. Um, a movie that I have seen just recently that I was really excited about that um, that is actually a remake done um, back from 1990 is the new version of The Witches. So I don't know if anybody's seen that yet, but that would be something I'd really like to talk about when we come back from this commercial break. We will do it. Um, we'll go to commercial break, and we'll talk about that when we come back. TellMeTarot.com Rare tarot and oracle decks for the discerning enthusiast or collector. Our decks are not for everyone. If you are a rare deck collector, art collector, or simply fall in love with a deck, then we might be for you. Right now, get 10% off your first order just for subscribing to their newsletter. Shipping is just $5.99 in the United States. TellMeTarot.com Hey, Scarefest fans, this is Joe Lewis at Bonehead Weekly. I actually, in the last couple of weeks, have had a chance to catch up on a lot of stuff. And by that, I mean I got to watch three or four horror films. So I have a slew of new reviews. Well, close. This is one that came out in the spring. It's called Gretel and Hansel instead of Hansel and Gretel. It's an odd little movie. Now, let's talk about it for a second because actually, I liked it quite a bit. But I don't know that any of you are going to like it quite a bit. The cool thing about it is that the director's name is Oz Perkins, which I just think is a cool name, but that's not that's not necessarily all that's great about it. It stars Sophia Lillis, and you would know her from it, Alice Krieg. Alice Krieg is in a ton of things. You know her from the Borg, Cre uh, Borg Queen from Star Trek. 
She's also in the uh, movie Ghost Story, which is based on a famous novel, Ghost Story, from the early 80s. She's in one of my favorite Nick Garris films as the mother who has sex with her son in Sleepwalkers, which is a weird thing to say out loud. Here's what it's about. So you're familiar with Hansel and Gretel. Well, Gretel and Hansel takes it and flips it just a little bit. It's a classic story, but this, but it's basically, it's about Gretel. That's the reason why Gretel's name is moved to the front, so the filmmakers say. Uh, Hansel is a little boy, and Gretel is barely, maybe preteen, early teens. And a young girl leads her little brother into the dark woods in a desperate search of food and work, only to stumble upon a nexus of terrifying evil, is the sentence that IMDb uses, which is true. They, they, there is a woodsman who helps them, gives them one night, and they leave there. And they find this beautiful cabin where it smells like chocolate and candy inside, and they're starving. That's what I liked about this movie. Is they're very, it's it's very realistic of what would have, if say this is 16, 1700s or 1500s, and you're thrown out. It would be tough to live in the woods. What are you going to do? What if your eight year? What if you're trying to help out your eight year old brother? So, of course, they succumb to it. They go in. A witch lives there, and she proceeds to feed them. Gretel does odd jobs for her, and Hansel eats a lot. And you know where this is going. None of this is new. What I liked about the movie, other than Alice Krieg is just a fantastic actress, is that it's shot beautifully. It's a little weird at first. It takes you a while. There's some fish-eyed lens scenes that I don't quite know, and there's a cool little scene where them eating some mushrooms in the forest this did not get the greatest reviews and i i get it it's probably not what people expect it's clearly a lower budget film it's beautifully shot it has some fantastic acting don't know that you don't see the ending coming from a mile away there is one little point where at the end the witch actually says out what out loud oh what a world so gretel has maybe some powers this witch kind of takes her under her her wing is she going to let the witch eat her brother is she no she's a witch i don't think i'm giving too many things away and i don't want to give away the ending if you can check it out gretel and hansel i actually kind of liked it i think it's better than what people think so if you get a chance it's on something called epics which is a service i don't get unless it's just free for a weekend but you can also check it out on prime video i think you have to pay a little bit or it's still at the red box so i highly enjoyed gretel and hansel not the best movie ever plus i mean it's a witch there's a lot of candy check out gretel and hansel this is joe lewis of bonehead weekly thanks so much And welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest Television. We understand there's a lag. We're hoping the recording comes out okay. We don't know. I'm going to have to lower the frame, the uh, the resolution on the show, apparently, because apparently my computer just cannot handle all this uh, newfangled um, technology. Anyway, um, now, for, uh, the only thing I want to say about the movie you were talking about is I want to, if it was a really good movie, they dub it and not just have subtitles. That's, I'm just going to say that. Now, witches, is it? <laughs> witches, is that the movie you're wanting to talk about now? Yes, The Witches originally came out in 1990 with Angelica Houston. Um, and it was, it, it, you know, more of a kid's movie, but had some really good makeup work and some really good special effects. Um, the Mice... Not so much, you know, it was kind of like the old school. They had the little talking mice and then they had um, for for scenes where they were actually moving around, they substituted them with real mice. So you could see the difference, but still charming. Um, Whereas they just came out with a new one um, 30 years later with Anne Hathaway. And Anne Hathaway was certainly amazing in this role. They did change the story um, quite a bit. The first one was done from the grandmother's perspective, the new one done from the actual perspective of the child who is in the movie, um, but still very good special effects. The mice were all CGI, so a little bit more believable than the original one, but I think it lost a little bit of its charm when they did that. Um, the witch, I think, in the original one was certainly way more horrid than um, the new one. Um, well, that's because still, it's, a, it's it's almost impossible to make Anne Hathaway horrid, let's face it. I know. She was a gorgeous witch. She really yes. was. So hard to do, but still um, done well. 
Um, I think for people who maybe didn't see the original one, they would really still like the new one. But for people like me who have seen the original one, it was so hard to not compare. That was the one I, I knew which movie you were talking about uh, because it created quite the buzz because apparently she had, what, like three fingers instead of... Yes. Um, yes, yes, and, yes. And I didn't even realize those that real people with three fingers have a lobby, apparently. And they said it was insulting to them and... And I, without, I don't want to sound callous to their cause, but at the same time, if we're going to do anything to a character in a movie, there's only so many, I mean, you know, so many things you can do. I mean, you know, and I guess I'm saying, I, once again, I don't want to, I don't want to pick at people, <laughs> but let us have our fun. Uh, anyway. Um, it looked, I mean, I, I didn't really hear any bad reviews on it or anything, but at the, that's because at the time the, the, the noise over that was overwhelming, whether the movie was good or bad. It was certainly good and something you can watch with, with kids. Now, is that, is that, that one I text on Prime? Um, you know, that might not, um, that might not actually be, you might still have to rent it. Well, I'm okay, but... When I say on Prime, that include, I'm, I don't I don't just mean the free shit for people like me. I mean actual where Amazon rents it through Prime. I, I actually, know, I should have said uh, what are they? Anyway, okay, I got you. It's on Amazon. You know, it was on my Fire Stick. Yeah, Fire Stick. I do, I do, I do sometimes mess up the um the difference between the two because yeah, Prime, Prime is the one that gives you access to both and. The fire stick just gives you whatever you're willing to pay for. Um, yeah. Now, some things I did want to uh, 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 talk about. Uh, we've got we're actually trying to get some more content beyond this this uh, technological marvel that you're seeing now. That I, I'm just going to go back to the way I was doing it. The um, which can I say the picture is really good tonight. <laughs> If it has all the frames, then I'm happy. Uh, that That's what I had to do last week. I had to separate all the audio out and then get it, like, lined up and everything. Um, there's just, I don't know if it's my computer or the internet or what, but anyway, we're not. But if the picture's good, that's because I'm broadcasting at 720 DPI. But apparently, it's not going to work out for my computer. Anyway, um, now one that created a lot of buzz online that I announced this week. Mm -hmm. Chip Divine and Spiritual Help and Inspirational Talk. That one that one has already created a lot of buzz. Uh, we're going to do it as either a monthly or bi-monthly, meaning two month, not every other month. I don't I don't I, I, no one's ever cleared that up for me. But anyway, the um it will be a not serious talk show. You think this is not serious? Okay, that's really not going to be serious because even even the host is going to be made up for that one. But Chip Divine and the Spiritual Help and Inspirational Talk, our first episode will premiere in January. We're just deciding whether to do it as a um, live show or recorded. My first guest, and I forgot the name. Of your first the, guest? Well, the, it's a nom de plume. In other words, it's a nom de plume. But he's a plant psychic. It's, he's a plant psychic. So that What will, does that mean exactly? That means he talks to plants. I talk to plants. Does that well, make me a psychic? Oh, it, can you hear them? Well, then you're not psychic. You're just someone talking <laughs> to plants. Um, we shy. got that one. Um... Now, here's one that I haven't talked a lot about online. I, my old podcast, Paranormal Filler, that Brandon Griffith talked me into stopping so that I could do this show. I'm actually thinking about bringing it back also. Once again, I haven't decided audio or video, but I'm wanting... Part of me wants to get back into the paranormal field. And Scarefest TV is not the, the platform that I want to overwhelm with paranormal stuff. So in other words, I could do that separately and give the paranormal a little more atten direct attention. The Here's the one thing that's stopping me. 
I've been out of the active field so long, CC, and we I mentioned this before the show. I went on a, um, Amazon Prime, the the free one, and watched a bunch of the not a bunch, but several of the series that have come out where these paranormal teams have put out their own versions of Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, whatever. Now, I'm not saying they're not well done. No one take this as an insult. Everything I watched was well filmed, were well narrated. Every, but thank you for reminding me why I quit investigating. Um. And it actually does bring up a good topic. The ghost hunters almost died in season two or three because people got tired of watching them walk around people's houses and not find shit. Yeah. You know, it was, you know, and the implication being that either they weren't doing it right or whatever. And uh, so they stepped up their game. They went to the most haunted places in the world. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, there were some accusations. I'm not even going to go. I don't know that if they ever faked anything. But I do think the producers learned to play up the moments where they might be startled by the noise in the wall or whatever. Um, and... It obviously worked because then they lived a nice, long, healthy life of like a thousand seasons. Now, these shows are trying, uh, full fairness, they're trying to do it pure. They're trying to do it right. I haven't watched any yet where they're trying to imitate, Im imitate um, Ghost Adventures. They're all trying to be serious about their work and, and uh, but walking around a dark building and asking things if you can hear me and you know uh speak to me and god i am so I, I i within within 10 minutes i was already tired of the ghost box i just so i don't i know something, we're, something has to happen something has to happen or at least the real problem with the paranormal TV right now, and I think now th this is being all, in all seriousness, it's been done. It's been done. There's very, there's very few things that you're going to do different enough from the next guy. The piece of equipment, you know, uh, when I see a K2 meter come out, I automatically tune out. I'm sorry. That's how I feel about a K2 meter. Uh, the ghost box has been overdone. Um, EVP sessions, a good EVP session, but but I'm not. I didn't see anything EVP session wise that was to me out of the ordinary. So I don't, you know, there's just there's a whole lot of the same, and and hopefully in the process of now that's the one thing with doing paranormal filler. If I go back to that, maybe I can find some shows that I can come on and sincerely recommend to people that are pushing the boundaries. Well, I think to stay relevant, you have to have a ghost hunting show. That has a lot of action and a gimmick. The gimmick I can get, but I can honestly say from experience, if you have a lot of action, there's something wrong. <laughs> the only exception. <laughs> now, this was another thing that people uh, I, they actually complained about it, but like, okay, the, the Waverly Hills episode, first time Ghost Hunters went there, they made it sound like they were only there. They never came out and said they were there only for the one night, but they were there like seven days. In other words, they should, they were investigating nearly every night for the best part of a week to get what they got. And most of your small teams are not going to have the financial whereabouts to be able to do that. And that's how you put together a show that's going to hold someone's interest. The um. The one thing I've never seen any, I would like to see one of these really good haunted places. I talked about doing it at, at our local haunt, but I just, once again, I didn't have the fire in my belly anymore. I would like to see somebody take one of these really haunted places and do what I would call a full study of it. Meaning, investigate it four or five times, not night, one night after the, the next. Different moon cycles, have all that information. It was more active on, that way you can say, it was more active on the full moon. My experience has been places are more active on the dark moon. Um, spring versus fall. 
we always did our best in a really early spring, late winter. That was when we got the most activity. Mm -hmm. And I've not seen any, but at the same time, I would like to see concentrate on one place and really dig into it for the long term and make... Make it into a, 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 you know, or use that series into one show. Do another location for another show. Do you think it could be done? I think you could do it. Oh, no, I couldn't. You can do it. I'm actually, I have two gears when I investigate. I'm either full on bullshit, meaning I'm, you know, Telling the ghost, you know, I get bossy. I actually get bossy now. I don't provoke. Don't don't mistake that, people. I don't provoke. Okay. But yeah, I, you don't want I, that chasing you home. Yeah, but I actually I do my psychic stuff, and and then I get all bossy with them, and and uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Or I just go in and I don't say a damn word, and I'm just touching stuff. That's... Come on up to Gettysburg. <laughs> Isn't that supposed to be like such a haunted place? Gettysburg is fantastic. Yes, I know the, the commercial break. I'm, I'm running a little long here. I've been to Gettysburg one time. I don't. I didn't go to any of the locations. I just went to the battlefield. But that place has major so much activity. Well, I would. You know, I never really got to the activity. I saw a lot of evidence that other people had collected there that was impressive. But the mm -hmm. thing about that, when you pull into that town, you can feel the history. You just it it just overwhelms you, and um and the and the and the uh, the battlefield in particular is just so somber and touching. And you're and you know you go around, you read the monuments, and you hear the stories. And uh, but now you know I, the only experience we had while we were there that was where the woman got freaked out by the self flushing toilet, incidentally. That I've told that story before, but <laughs> but nice. um, the uh, it was my GPS was almost useless from the time we rolled into town. Yeah, it just it just it just nothing, and that and I actually believe that's one thing ghosts like to mess with with me is my GPS because um, I went to a, uh, I don't know if it, I think it was I might have been Waverly Hills one time, and the in, the entire time it kept telling me, you know, uh, turn around, do this, do that. I'm like, no, I know where, I know how to get there. I just, I just wanted you for long for company and tell me how long it was. Anyway, quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Scarefest TV. Spirit Mechanics is here to help. Their background includes many different specialties across the metaphysical spectrum, including alchemy, shamanism, Celtic witchcraft, angelic magic, astral travel, and more. With over 30 years combined experience in the group, you can be confident in their ability to help. If there is a question you have that you cannot answer, they will do their best to assist you. Metaphysics can be intimidating, confusing, and unfortunately, abused. Spirit Mechanics takes pride in being selfless in the pursuit of helping others, being humble and honest with their clients about their questions, and lastly maintaining a professional and personable atmosphere. They want you to feel as you are coming to a close friend and they will do everything in their power to make you comfortable and safe. Horror. Movie. Fans. Four. Life. Find us. Four. News. Four. Memes. Four. Life. Okay, everybody, uh, we'll do the business now. Don't forget, New Year's edition of Scarefest CyberCon is coming up on January 9th. We have three guests so far on the books. Darcy DeMoss, 
will be there. Of course, she was a part of the dry humping scene in Friday the 13th, part six. Tom Fridley, who also was in that scene and uh, also had a party in Friday Kid. Um, then up next, we have Nicole Hiltz from Trailer Park of Terror. We're still looking for film submissions for the film festival. So if you know anybody who does horror movie shorts, 30 minutes or less, we're looking for about 12 of those. And we do not even, we're not even close to being filled up for this one. Next week on Scarefest TV, Ken Boggle's triumphant return to Scarefest TV. Ken Boggle used to be a co-host. Then he got on with Viddy Space and did Tarot Date with Ken Boggle. And he's coming back to uh, catch us up on his life. And then right after that, he is going to do an after party with us for our patrons at patreon.com slash these or slash Scarefest Radio. And he'll do a tarot gallery for anybody who joins before then. So go to patreon.com slash scarefestradio, get your membership, and then you'll be invited to the Zoom Meeting Tarot Gallery. Alrighty. Um, 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 another thing I've been watching that actually plays into where I was talking about bringing back Paranormal Filler, I decided to try to watch, and people in the chat room, you might be able to help me out here. I decided to watch some UFO documentaries. And they're boring as fuck. They're, <laughs> I'm not saying they're not well made and, and they tried very hard, which incidentally, now one of them, uh, UFO TV presents the afterlife sessions about the, uh, uh, I think it was called the Skull Experiment um, up in uh, um, um, Pennsylvania. Anyway, some really interesting stuff in that episode. That episode was the exception, but once again, did not deal with UFOs. But I've been trying to find a good... And if anybody in the chat room says ancient aliens, I am just going to ban you from the chat room. You don't but I love that one? I do, but it's... it To me, it's not it's not UFO evidence. It's... Right. It's all conjecture, conjecture and theory, and and I'm not even saying I don't buy into it. I'm just saying that it's not. I'm wanting to see, you know, since the government's come out and admitted that we have flying saucers, you'd think somebody could do an interesting um, um, uh, series, documentary, something. And Wait, is that in writing somewhere that the government says there's really UFOs? Yeah, they said we don't know what the hell they are. They released some footage that their fighter jets caught, and um, they they they've really they. I mean, they're not saying aliens are getting ready to land on the White House lawn, and they're not talking about the lizard people that are in charge of our government, but but they are saying that there are things up in the skies that they can't explain. Now, are they are they? Where are they coming from is the question. Yeah, yeah, can, I yeah. get, can I see a, a raise of hands, everybody in the chat room that um, that believes in UFOs, please? Uh, Chad Harlan, you got your ass banned. You'll never be back on this show again. He said <laughs> he ancient loves aliens. The apes and aliens. Uh, he, he, loves, he loves to just pick at me. But I anyway, love it too. Um, actually, it keeps getting that funny because I've watched these others now. They just cannot wait to suggest it on the little, you know, street. you should watch Ancient Aliens. And I'm like, well, I've, I've watched most of them, just not in any particular order. Um, but uh, so I, I want to see. It's not even that the evidence they show isn't good. It's that there's so little really solid good evidence, I guess. They they spend like 30 minutes talking about one film clip. Um <laughs> it's just, I, you know, can we please go on to something else? And, uh, but at the same time, I, I'm, I, mean, I was watching it to get ideas because I do love talking to people uh, about UFOs. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Tom Conwell has some great theories about um, the relationship with where the sightings are concentrated and the, um, uh, um, the geography uh, places with mountains. Why is it always out in very rural areas? Why is it never just over the city where everybody can be like, hey, there Okay. Is. Now, I will give you the real world, non smart ass explanation of why you don't see them over cities. Go to any okay. city and look up. You cannot see stars. You can't see Super shit. Right. If you're out in the country, especially if you get someplace like Iowa, you can see like a 
billion miles that way and a billion miles that way. And so, yeah, that's why. That, that's the biggest reason people, and, and because there's nothing on the ground to hold your attention, you'll look up. Uh, see, that's my weakness. Uh, I could get buzzed by a flying saucer when I'm driving. I would never know it. And not notice. No. My hands are at 10 and 2, and I'm, you know, z- zoned out on, on talk radio or some bullshit. And I, I yeah, no. They'd have, they, they would have to, they would literally have to block the road. That because I'm a safe driver paying attention to the road, then I, they would catch my attention. Ten and two. Ten and yep, two. Ten and, ten and two, baby. Um, apparently, there are none because all the people they're talking about ancient aliens, but now they're they're not like, yeah, watch it. Watch so and so. Um, now you were earlier talking about Christmas movies. Have you watched Fat Man yet? Is that a Christmas movie? It's got Santa Claus in it. How much? What more do you want? Which version is this? The only one I like is the Michael Keaton version. That's my favorite. Oh, you have to see the... Fa- Mel movie. Gibson. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson is Batman? Batman. Now, no, you know, no, you're you're talking about Batman. No, Fat Man. Like Santa Claus. Fat Man. Oh, Fat Man. That's the name yes. of a movie? Fat Man? Yes. If you I watch it... See, I have not even heard of this. It's, oh, you will love it. It's on Netflix, isn't it? So. Yeah, it, it, I'll put it. Th- no, it's not. I you, you, uh, no, we, it. we had to rent it. It's on Amazon <laughs> because we had to rent it. It's you know, a good movie. If you watch the previews, you will think, okay, th- this this is something they made up as a publicity stunt. Adding uh, this to my list, Fat Man. But it's called Fat Man, and it um. It is a very very unique take on the Santa Claus myth. They get most of it in. I don't okay. think they, ever, they never talk about going down the chimney, but otherwise, um, lump of coal in the stocking and all, and uh, and it is. Is it funny? Is it a comedy? It had no. Now it's. I would call it. It's actually a thriller. It is. Now it's got some funny parts. Don't get me wrong. It's you know, yeah. <laughs> Mel Gibson playing Santa Claus. Of course, it's funny. But that being said, um, it's more whimsical. I wouldn't. Say, it's not funny. It's whimsical. Now I need to Google that and make sure I use that word right. Um, yeah, it's in a word. It's it's off kilter. Okay. okay. It's it's a little. I will off-kilter. have to look into that after Christmas. Right now, I'm really enjoying all of my scary Christmas movies, like The Christmas Horror Story. All the creatures were stirring. Um, better watch out. Very good one. Twisted. Very twisted. Um, Black you, Christmas. Have you watched Sleigh Bells? I have not watched Sleigh Bells. <laughs> It's garbage, but it's good fun. Okay, it, uh, good. <laughs> it, no, it it came that close to being a good movie. I think a I think it obviously had a good budget. It the special effects were good enough. Everything about it was good enough, except the script was. Ju- it just didn't quite make it. Very that and nice. and some of the direction, some kind of, the, of like you, that Christmas cookie one with Gary Busey. Had a good story, but it just didn't make it. Yeah, th- this one. Well, actually, I'm gonna blame it on the director. I don't even know who directed it, but it. He threw some things. I'll put it this way: it would have been better without some of the stuff that was in it. It's one of those movies that didn't need more; it needed less. And some of the the funny stuff. You can read the fat man thing. Oh, okay. Here is the the official blurb on fat fat man. Fat man. Here we go. To save his declining business, Chris Kringle, also known as Santa Claus, is forced into a partnership with the U.S. military. Making matters worse, Chris gets locked into a deadly battle of wits against a highly skilled assassin hired by a precocious 12-year-old after receiving a lump of coal in his stocking. Wow. Was, was it Peppermint? No, it Did was go not. in there and whoop up on him? Um, the Santa Claus character, yes. Now, if I had to, if I had to pick one thing about the movie that I didn't like, the the U.S. military that was guarding the facility, the toy facility that had been repurposed to make what he was making, one guy is not going to take out that many soldiers. He did, he did, it was too easy. I don't care if you're a professional assassin or not. He, they, I, I, I. I 
I guess I'm a bit of a patriot there. I like my my military to put up a good fight. I like, you know, like um, we watched one the other day. That's uh, what we're paying them for. Well, that and they're they're badasses, and, and they're badasses, e even right? the ones guarding Santa Claus. I mean, you know, they should be especially. Yes, and so I I felt the military in it was uh, woefully unrepresented to work to the level that it should have been. But other than that, other than that, like I said, uh, fun from beginning to end, and um, and it goes into the whole, you know, when a kid writes Santa Claus on an envelope and mails it, you know, yeah. It, it follows up on that, and it's 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 really neat, and um and, and it has a moral. It sounds heartwarming. It it really is. At the end of the movie, Santa decides to become a little more proactive. Oh, nice. Yeah. So. All right, we got we got one more commercial break. Everybody, we'll be right back to wrap this up. We didn't even get to a phone call because we have so much fun. Oh we Do we have time for one phone call when we come back? No. Mm. Yeah, we could. If somebody wants to call in during the commercial break, I will take the phone call. The number is 859-298-3522. 859-298-3522. It's not a toll-free number, but everybody in the modern world has a cell phone, so suck it. Everyone is talking about CBD oil, and it seems like almost everyone is using it. The research is ongoing, but the apparent health benefits are overwhelming. If you're going to use CBD products though, what brand should you buy? First, find out where the hemp was grown. Imports are flooding the market. How potent is it? Look for a brand that plainly states its concentration on the label. And look for full spectrum CBD. This means the oil contains CBD and all the other cannabinoids, terpenes, and nutrients that are found in the entire cannabis plant. Look for Blue Leaf CBD oil. Blue Leaf Naturals is a Kentucky proud company. They use only Kentucky grown hemp supporting Kentucky farmers and businesses. Visit their website at blueleafcbd.com now and use the code SMILE at checkout for free shipping. Mama Ruby offers fun vendor-based events that focus primarily on the metaphysical and spiritual aspects of our lives. Well, 2020 didn't go as planned, to say the least. Since Mama Ruby's can't bring the vendors to you in person, they still encourage you to support them online. <laughs> links to these and other outstanding artists, craftspeople, vendors, and psychics, visit MamaRubies.com and click shop. Coyote Chris Sutton. Shamanism. Spiritual advisement. Paranormal investigations. Inspirational presentations. Bringing light to the darkest places for over 20 years. Go to CoyoteChris.com to learn more. And welcome back to the final 10 minutes of Scarefest TV, where tonight we've just been bullshitting our way through the episode and talking about all the neat stuff we've been watching. Um, But uh, we, the one other thing we were talking about before the show, we were talking about, of course, the vaccine and when uh, Bowling Green, the uh, the uh, the convention that I, I, it's a small convention, but I really like it, uh, Vet City Con. They've officially canceled for 2021. I hated to hear it, but I knew it was going to happen. Mm. Um. So, uh, and I am at the point I want out of this damn house and I want to get drunk and I will take the vaccine. And if I die, I die. That is pretty much at, at, at the, 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 the mental stage I am, I am approaching here. I'm not going out and being irresponsible. I will wear my mask and be a good person, but I, I want to be around people so bad. Death is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. We will get through this. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, 
<laughs> it, um, just saying. I'll put it this way. It is so bad. Do you realize that Jehovah Witnesses are emailing people now? Wow. Yes. It's that, that is how bad that it's gotten that people are not even knocking on your door anymore. They're emailing you, um, the good word. So that's crazy. Strange it's world. A, it's a crazy world we live in. I am. Um, this, oh, and now another one I have not um, even broached. It was something, it was a project I was going to want to work on um, before off topic. And actually, it's where off topic started when I did that for Viddy Space. I actually wanted to do a political show, but not rah rah Republicans, rah rah Democrats, but take an issue and try to show both sides of it fairly and explain to both sides why the other side feels that way. And then certain people got elected, and I said, I'm not stepping on that third rail. But so going forward, I'm still playing with that idea just to, to see if I can pull it off. It sounds interesting. Sounds like you would get a lot of feedback. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm afraid of. Because mm -hmm. nobody wants to hear the other side anymore. And and that's and like I said, and that's both sides. So yeah. so uh definitely a split. <laughs> So anyway, um, so yeah, uh, everybody, we've got some things coming up on Scarefest that will be launching after the first of the year, but the first one out of the gate will be Chip Divine, because I have people asking, begging me to come on that show, and have me make fun of them, apparently, because I'm not, I'm not pretending that it's a serious show. Chip Divine is a psychic who thinks he knows more than anybody else, and it's, I'm, I, and I'm, we're going to try to present it as one of those late night shows you hear on AM radio when you're driving through like Nebraska. You yeah. Know. Yeah. That that kind of thing. And um and and he created a lot of buzz. And of course if uh, anybody's bothered to spell out the name, if you weren't in on the on the post that I did, Spiritual Help and Inspirational Talk, it is an uh, I believe it's called an anagram. An anagram. Oh, spiritual yeah. help and inspirational talk. Okay. Figure it out. Um And we've run out of stuff to talk about. I watched, um, oh, oh, oh no. I just got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, uh, of course, I'm keeping up with The Mandalorian, uh, doing the show on Friday nights. Of course, I follow an episode behind every week, but I, I'm caught up on the, the main. Oh, that's one thing I was going to talk about. We got a few minutes. Uh, I just got to figure out what I did with. Disney is going off the rails here. I think Disney is going to try. Disney has too many projects. Uh oh. Where is that? Uh, oh, here it is. I have, I have it pulled up. It, it had a big ad for for Capital One Shopping, and I thought I was on the wrong website. Anyway, uh, Marvel through Disney is going to launch so many series and movies Ooh. that I'm afraid they're going to start shortchanging them. Because they're trying to get a lot of, of course, a lot of these are already started, but they're trying to get a whole bunch out in 2021, my understanding is. Mm -hmm. And this, I mean, this is an ambitious list. They have 52 projects announced. How are they even doing that, filming all that with COVID? Well, some of it they're not yet, but I guess they're planning on being able to film it. But uh, like WandaVision, see, that's uh, January 15th. That's apparently already in the can. Um, that's the uh, 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 Scarlet Witch and Vision um, thing um, where she uses her superpowers to un <laughs> unbury Vision or whatever. Um, that's Obviously, a big one. anybody working for Disney is getting the flu vaccine first. <laughs> it's quite possible. <laughs> quite possible. Uh, I guess uh, now Falcon Winter Soldier, see, that's coming up in March. They're doing, that's a series. That's another thing. Series, you know, that's yeah, uh, it takes a while to film a movie, but to film a six or twelve episode uh, series, you know, that's uh, pretty ambitious. The uh, but the I, I saw the trailer for Falcon and Winter Soldier. It looks mm -hmm. good, but I don't. I'm wondering how they're going to handle the Captain America not being super strong. See, Falcon doesn't have any real superpowers. He has a suit that lets him fly. Oh. And and so he's going to be carrying Cap Shield now, and uh, so anyway, that's that's a whole other thing. Uh, Loki, Loki gets his own series, and it's 
Uh, it's apparently when he took the Tesseract, everybody, if you haven't seen the preview, and he bebopped out of uh, Endgame, apparently he didn't go where he meant to go, and he's like lost out in the multiverse now, and uh, he's going to be on alternate worlds and all this. That's what it looked like to me. Now, that's... Uh, uh, they got Hawkeye coming up in late 2021, and that's before... That's just some of the Marvel stuff. They got... Uh, the list of stuff for Star Wars, they've got like eight or ten series and movies coming up just around the Star Wars mythos. Um, I caught a fly. <laughs> I am. What? My kung fu is strong. Would you please shower? I did today. Thank you. Can very I much. please have yeah. Jim Henson's crew go back and do the second series uh, season of the um, the Dark Crystal, please? Please, can somebody work on that? You heard her, everybody. Everybody start emailing and tweeting that um, that. Uh, I would just think I caught a fly. Mister Miyagi can kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, uh, but uh, apparently Lando. Uh, Here's one that freaked me out. I had not heard about it. Where is it here? Um, does anybody remember the train wreck that was the Star Wars Christmas special? Oh, I know that would be up in Marvel. That's why I didn't see it. The Star Wars Christmas special. It was a train wreck. I, it was so bad. And I remember, I think I watched it when I was a kid. Uh, I was probably 12, 15, 14 years old. Um, it was so bad that they... They did. They destroyed all the copies. It was. I mean, you could. I think there's floating. Somebody ended up with. I think you can get it on YouTube now if you really search hard. That bad, They're, huh? Marvel Studios is working on a new Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special for Disney Plus, due out in 2022. Directed by James Gunn, and I'm thinking. It went so well the first time that somebody tried to do that. Why not? <laughs> and the group can be the Christmas tree. Absolutely. Actually, I wonder if he'll still be a teenager. That would actually be good comedy relief. Watching teenage group dry hump a Christmas tree. That would uh. You went what? there. You totally went there. <laughs> just, it had to go somewhere. But I that when I saw that in the uh, on on the. Uh, on the reporting from The Verge. Um, that might be the end of Disney as we know it. <laughs> Who, in the chat room, have you ever seen a Christmas special built around a movie franchise that went really, really well? Anybody? 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 <laughs> and the room goes silent. So I anyway, darn thing in the chat room. So um, and they never did come up with a, a good UFO series for me to watch. I'm I'm real, I'm a little disappointed tonight. Yeah, I am. Uh, uh, we talked about mayhem. Uh, the other one I watched, I went reached back and <laughs> it's not that old. You act like I went back and watched some black and white film. What? Hell, Hell House LLC. Yeah. I like good movie. It. Good movie. Are you talking about the one from 2015? No, it's older than that one. Um, the most recent one was 2015. Well, that's not the most recent one. I wa I watched them. I was trying to watch them in order. See, okay. Mm -hmm. They did the first one. And then um, the second one, a reporter. What was it now? Oh, God, there's four of them. Yeah, <laughs> I might have even watched the second one, but I did. I didn't make it any farther than that. Um, so uh, but I'm glad you threw out. I'm thinking 2012 was the first one, but regardless, it um, I thought it was very well done. It was very imaginative, um, as much as found footage stuff can be. Oh, this was filmed in. Pennsylvania? Is that true? Uh, probably was because you know, it was pretty, it was an independent project. And it, in other words, and even in the storyline, 
it's where they moved the house around. So I'd say, yeah, I'd say it was pretty local interesting. project. Interesting. And they posed it as a true story, but very interesting. And um, right up until the end of it, they kept it pretty believable. I mean, hmm. you know, it was a girl telling the story and they had filmed, and she had brought in a bunch of film that had never been released. And um, yeah. So, uh, so that's, that's what we got for tonight, people. That's what I've been doing with my spare time, uh, because I'm saving watching Can't Buy Me Love until Darcy and Amy can come on because they were in that movie together. And so I've, I've decided not to watch it. I want it to be fresh on my mind when I do get them on. She said she would reschedule for the, after the first of the year. Uh, of course we've got Ken Boggle coming up next week, uh, January 1st. John and Stacy Edwards of um, um um I forget the name of their podcast now and so I'm really embarrassed. But anyway, Paranormal uh, Scarefa- slideshow. They, huh? Paranormal slideshow. Paranormal slideshow. They they uh they do um they do something I've never been able to accomplish. They actually sit and do paranormal and weird news stories and talk about it and make smart ass comments. And I I I worship the ground they walk on because they do it so well and they've been doing it several years so um, that sounds fun yeah so they're going to come on and they're going to do a recap of 2020 the their favorite stories and bring some new ones that have just popped up in the last couple weeks to actually do their stick fresh for us on scarefest tv so that'll be fun um still working with scott porter trying to get him freed up during the holidays if he can't do the 25th I may just call Chad and CC in, and we may just get drunk on there and do what we did. The twenty fifth, as in Christmas Day. Yeah, we always have a holiday episode, but really? it's not a real episode. It's just like we get drunk and then and, and cuss a lot. And I'm allowed to drink in that one. Yes, you can drink in that one. You can drink in that one. You can steal the show. You can do whatever the hell you want because it, <laughs> you it, can flash us. You yeah. can do anything. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. I'll now, have to see, bring my strobe light so everybody can get flashed. All you would have had to do was flick those lights on and off, and you could see, see I flashed everybody. See? I can't reach it. I can't reach it. <laughs> but there's my lava lamp. No, wait, that's not a lava lamp. What is that called? Yes. Oh, it's a, that's a Himalayan rock salt or something. Isn't yes. It? It's yeah. making me so happy. <laughs> Who would have thought putting a light bulb in a chunk of salt would make people <laughs> feel better? It would make so much money. So anyway, um, but that's what's coming up. Uh, we're, we're starting on next year's schedule. Uh, we will be functioning at some degree through the holidays doing something, people. So if you've got a Friday night and you've got nothing else to do, Scarefest TV will be here for you. CC, thanks so much for coming on and bullshitting with me tonight. Thank you for having me. Everybody, this has been Scarefest TV. Good night, everybody.